Howdy, howdy, Legends. It's everyone's favorite professional Apex Legends caster and analyst, Zephyr here, back for another video. This one is for all of you legal aimbotters out there. We're taking a deep dive into the controller input for Apex Legends, looking over some of the best settings to use, the principles behind choosing your settings, and some gameplay tips and advice for controller users. But first, our question of the day. How would you rate the Legend Valkyrie out of 10, and why? Let us know down below. The use of controller has grown in popularity in Apex Legends as well as the huge player base on console. More and more PC players are opting for controller as their primary input. We've seen a huge swath of mouse and keyboard pro players change input to controller, including people like Imperial Hal. But why? The controller input, when mastered, is really strong in close fighting situations. In particular, the aggressive meta and incredibly strong set of SMGs in Apex have made close-range fighting all the more common, only strengthening the power of controller players. There are, of course, strengths and weaknesses to both inputs. They do, however, have one thing in common. You can maximize your potential with the right settings. That doesn't mean just finding a controller pro and copying their settings exactly, but it means understanding what works for you and why you use a certain setting. Let's go over some that are game specific and then dive into some controller specific ones. FOV and graphics. First, field of view. This can make a really big difference to your in-game experience, affecting what you can see and your aim. The default setting is 90, but most pro players play at 110 FOV, which is the maximum. Now, why do they prefer this? Frankly, for information. The more you can see, the better in a lot of situations, especially with audio and Apex being, well, let's say hit and miss. The more you can see visually, the better. The most noticeable drawback from the higher field of view is aim, especially at longer ranges. The higher FOV is almost like a zoom out function. This means that when aiming at long distances, you are shooting a smaller target. Though, on controller, we are focusing on close-range engagements, so the trade-off here is smaller than those on mouse and keyboard. However, there is a reason why a lot of professionals use 110 FOV, because they feel that the trade-off is worth it for the extra information. It also makes you feel like you're moving a lot faster, which can be a little weird at first. Then, when it comes to display settings, we have to make a choice here. We can either focus on aesthetics or performance. You can ramp your settings up to make the game look pretty. And to be fair, Apex is a really nice looking game when everything is at maximum. But this will come at a cost of your FPS. Even if you have the 4090 supercomputer with RGB fans and a built-in cup holder, you will still find that the maximum settings can cause some performance issues. Or we can dial those settings down to maximize our frame rate. Having a good FPS and a high refresh rate monitor, of course, can make a real difference to your aim on M and K. But for our controller players, we recommend doing whatever it takes to get the highest FPS that your screen's refresh rate can handle. However, controller input delay for now is best at 144 FPS or 144 Hertz. So even if you have that snazzy 240 hertz monitor on controller, we suggest sticking to 144 hertz to minimize input lag. So turn down as many settings as you can and deal with it. It's important to turn off V-Sync and turn on NVIDIA Reflex if you have that as an option. The rest are personal preference pretty much. Looking for a leg up in Apex? Pro Guides has everything you need to supercharge your gameplay to the next level. From detailed in-game knowledge and guides to specialist coaches, whatever your gameplay needs, we've got you covered. Why not sit down with an Apex Predator and get direct feedback on your gameplay? Perhaps ask them for their tips and tricks on how to reach the next rank in Apex. Check out the link in the description and let's go. Controller settings. Now let's look at controller specific setups. First of all, the controller button layout. The default layout doesn't quite allow for some useful techniques such as crouch spamming, which is very beneficial to make yourself harder to hit, and some of the other presets are better, but all have a flaw. And of course, it depends if your controller has paddles or not. Perhaps you already have some decent muscle memory from another FPS game. What is really crucial is that the layout feels right for you and allows you to deploy the gameplay mechanics that you need to be successful. Try not to be stubborn and test things out to see what feels good. Just make sure to allow yourself time to get adjusted to those new settings. Next, we're gonna dive into those all important response curve and sensitivity settings. 
This is just advice and guidance, and there are a range of good options to use, and it's important to find what works for you as a player, and not just copy whatever you see a pro player use. There is a few common settings, so they are worth trying. Just like any setting, make sure you give yourself the time to get used to it. Response curve affects how your stick reacts to input. Classic is inspired from Titanfall. Do try out the options here, but we suggest linear because it picks up tiny movement and can be used a lot more precisely. This makes it harder to use, but once you master it, it's going to raise your skill ceiling. For sensitivity, we have both the non-ADS and ADS sensitivities here. There are a range of values from between one to eight. Sensitivity really matters and can even affect how strong your aim assist feels. Most pro players use something made up of either the threes or fours or a mix of them both. Whatever feels best for them and suits their preferences. For faster movement, some players also use five to three. Some players you know might not even use one of these presets. This is because here are also ALCs, which we will come on to next. ALC stands for Advanced Look Controls. Using these settings allow you to fine tune your sensitivity more complicated, sure, but equally there is way more control over how your game feels. It can be pretty overwhelming. I mean, there's so many options and it does look very intimidating. Finding the right ALCs can be tough. There are pro player settings that you can copy, but settings like Dead Zone really have to be customized to your equipment based on the controller you use and the stick drift you experience. You should aim for the Dead Zone as low as you can. Whatever value is the lowest, you need to eliminate any drift you have. Jump in the range and up that value by 1% each time till you find the perfect value. The outer threshold is defaulted at 3%. That value dictates how quickly your controller will read maximum input. See how the default feels. Now, the rest of the settings are really up to you. Try them out, see how they feel, and you won't find the perfect set of ALCs for your first time, but definitely see how you feel about them. Now, let's run through some of the key ones. Response Curve at 8 feels like classic, Linear is somewhere between 0 and 3. Yaw is your horizontal speed, and Pitch is the vertical. We always want to have the yaw speed higher than the pitch. A good starting point is your current pre-built sense multiplied by 50. So 50 times 3 would give us 154 our yaw, for example. But what value do we need our pitch at? Set it at about 75% of whatever yaw you just got and you're on to a solid start. Then adjust and tweak values to see what feels right for you. All the extra tuning speed settings we suggest putting at zero, but do try them out. But the extra settings are a bit weird and can ruin your muscle memory. Once you get your ideal settings down, you're gonna fry. Just remember the key rule. Always give it enough time to get used to the changes. So, now that we have the perfect settings, let's run through some quick fire gameplay tips. Aim Assist. Look, controller players get a lot of stick. Aim Assist this, broken aimbot that. Honestly, just embrace it. It's true that a good controller player does have an advantage over a mouse and keyboard player in those close range 1v1s. So, let's play to our strength. Get your hands on a strong close range spray weapon like the car or a Volt. Get in people's faces and get aggressive. However, we also need to bear in mind some of our weaknesses. We don't have the super glide, tap strafe, roly poly wall bounce moves available to some of our better M and K players. So we need to be aggressive and get in people's faces, sure, but be careful and don't get caught out in the open. A really vulnerable time is when you're looting, stood dead still in the middle of the open. Keep aware and try to get in and out of boxes ASAP if they are exposed. We hope this guide was helpful and there was a lot of information, so don't feel too overwhelmed. Just work through the settings and try and find something that works for you. Until next time, Legends!